Stop what you're doing and stop Spider-Man. You? Wait, me? You? 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 Miles. Miles Morales. He's entering Sector 4. Do I, uh, have web on my face? What's the deal? Miles! He's right there. He's right Turn around! I don't see anything, boss. <laughs> Let me guess. He died? Hey, panelers. Welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And I am Rob. And this episode, we are going to be covering Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse that just came out recently in theaters. And so far, the movie's been doing so well and outdoing, of all things, the new Transformers movie, even though Transformers just came out the week after. So it's been out for two weeks. Now, in comparison to what Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse grossed after 111 days, which... 384 million in 12 days spider-man across the universe has grossed 390 million dollars wow. 396.8 million to be exact and that, <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that 6.8 <laughs> probably just got done like in the last hour uh, i would say so right yeah china did that <laughs> if we're still talking to china right <laughs> But yeah, it's doing so so well. The reviews are have been hot on this. I wanted to cover it like we did the last time. I think, Steve, when we did uh, Into the Spider Verse years ago, when that came out, <sighs> wow! I think we did it literally within the week. I that, it, <laughs> that seems correct, but I'm not gonna. Uh, I can't call it, man. I'm not. <laughs> yeah. My memory's not that good. <laughs> I remember it because it was like holidays at the time. Okay. Because uh, they had uh, Spidey Bells, and I was really excited about it. It was around that time, and I was prepped to go see it, and I I loved that movie. And this movie was amazing, just the same. And Rob and I were talking uh, long before we recorded, I think before we actually recorded for Fantasy Picks, Rob, you and I were talking, and you were saying how, how you think it could you know surpass Into yes. the Spider-Verse. That is true. And, A lot of people and, are saying that. Yeah, that's that's what's being said. And it, it gave us what we expected, but I think more. So uh, that that's my theory and thought of it. But before we get even too far into this already, as we started discussing, let's hear the synopsis of the movies for those people who don't know what the movie's about. Which I'm, <laughs> and of pretty course, sure you, the listeners here, <laughs> and of course, our <laughs> warning, our warning should be: this is going to be a spoiler full podcast for Spider-Man yes. across. The Spider Verse. So, if you haven't seen the movie, and you, I don't know why you would be listening if you haven't seen it. But <laughs> hey, you know, go back, go see it, and then come back. But anyway, there, there's your warning. We're going to be talking about all things of this movie, and here is the synopsis. After reuniting with Gwen Stacy, Brooklyn's full-time friendly neighborhood Spider-Man is catapulted across the multiverse, where he encounters a team of Spider People charged with protecting its very existence. However, when the heroes clash on how to handle a new threat, Miles finds himself pitted against the other spiders. He must soon redefine what it means to be a hero so he can save the people he loves most. Yeah. It's very true. Point. There you go. <laughs> very true. I mean, there's nothing about Spot in there, but we'll talk about Spot, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. And Spot's not a dog, everybody. Keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, all right. Well, we'll like, we'll, let's just talk about our overall thoughts of the movie. Uh, what we th- initially thought about when we saw it uh i'm sure we're gonna play off each other like we normally do and and have uh certain insights on on certain uh things that came about within the movie itself so steve start us off what were your initial thoughts i you know i really enjoyed it i was a little I, i was a little put off by the the 
the differing styles of animation at first, mm. but by the end of the by the end of it, I really liked it. I really enjoyed all the different styles and the fact that they even had some live action kind of mixed in there with the so other Sony Spider Man movies. I thought that was super cool. My only like, and we may. I, I don't want to take away from anybody. My only criticism is I saw the to be continued coming. Like it, I we're getting close <laughs> to the end of the movie. I'm looking at my watch and I'm going, man, it's already been over two hours and there's no way they can wrap this all up. Are they going to do it to be continued? Are they going to, are they going to go infinity war on us and go to be continued? <laughs> Come on. But then, yeah, so yeah, when, when that popped up, I did, it didn't surprise me at all that uh, there was a to be continued there at the end, but uh, no, I loved it. And uh was just, Excited. I wanted to see it again before we podcasted, but I'm definitely going to go watch it again at some point before it leaves the theaters. It's still going to be out there in theaters, I'm pretty sure. It, it seems like Sony with this particular movie, it, it's not going to lose. I, I think with any of the Spider-Man movies that have, mm-hmm. that have come out, the live action and and uh, the animated, they're, they're definitely getting their money's worth. And that's why they're holding on to that IP. <laughs> they're not going to get, let it go easily. Yeah. So that's why they, they had this whole shared thing with, uh, Marvel Disney. Right. So, but Rob, what were, what were your thoughts? Well, here's my, uh, <laughs> two things. One, as I watched this movie, I kept saying to myself, why is it that Sony? does not know how to actually do a Spider-Man movie. And what I mean by that is, so when you watch the other Spider-Man movies, you know, especially uh, Amazing Spider-Man, and then you, of course, see Morbius, and then, if you know, Venom. <laughs> These are movies that, to me, they're horrible, right? Hmm. And then I watch this movie, and I'm like, and, and I sat there awestruck on how good this movie was. Mm -hmm. And and I'm like, where's the disconnect from the people who are doing this movie to the people that are doing the other Spider-Man stuff? At what point do you think somebody in Sony would say, you know what, maybe we should get those guys and get their opinion? Because I have always said, if you respect the IP and you're passionate and you know the subject matter and you're passionate about it, then this should be good. And it just seems like Sony wasn't getting that. But this movie is one of those things that I sat there and enjoyed every second of this movie. This movie just left me awestruck. And to me, possibly, and and let me tell you, I love the first uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. It's one of my top 10 movies of all time. For me, this movie, possibly the best animated movie I have ever seen in my life. That's how yeah. good I think this movie is. That's quite an endorsement there. Yeah. yeah. As far as animation, I, I think it, it achieved a lot of levels of uh, respect because of, like you were saying before, Steve, it kind of takes you away. But with the different versions of animation, at first, it's kind of jarring. Very much how when we were kids, remember, Rob? Or even Steve, I think you might remember it, too, with the New Mutants. When the New Mutants came out in comics... Mm-hmm. They had, uh, they had like the regular traditional artwork style, and then right. a new an and a new artist came out with the uh, with the art right around the Warlock time when Warlock came got introduced to the New Mutants, the, right. the alien that came into the group. It was kind of avant garde, weird, jagged, hmm. and some of the animation in this movie reminded me of that, where it was uh, the way it looked and. So for us who are traditionalists that are so used to our, let's say, Hanna Barbera or <laughs> Spider Man and his amazing friends or right. or whatever, you were used to those cartoon styles and then they start changing it a little bit. Kind of like if you look at an anime from Japan. <laughs> mm-hmm. You get used to that. Yeah. I really did enjoy it. And for me, the movie it didn't take away from it because I expected it from the last film. So right. my my overall thought w- was when I first came in, I was expecting to see this is definitely going to be a great movie. I w- I was anticipating this, but it proved more for me, for, not just for the animation, which was definitely off the hook. We, we got something better this time around. They improved on it. They gave us more. They got they gave us more Spider-Man mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. in the film. 
you know, I don't, I don't know what the total count is. It's well over a hundred if you think about it. Oh yeah, for sure. You had the live action integrated in there. There's some of them. Uh, some of the animation looked to me like rotoscoping too. Well, it depends because so I, I was kind of, so at first I was actually confused when the movie started, just like you, Steve. Where I was like, okay, so this a, this animation style is a little different, and I come I, I came to find out later that they were emulating the first issue of Spider Gwen, which oh. was actually exactly in the same art style. Yeah, same type of, you know, brush strokes, all those things were exactly the same way. Then they went into the Miles, you know, universe, and then you started seeing the familiar stuff that were, mm-hmm. you know, we were familiar with. So what I thought, and then of course they had uh what was it, the uh and again spoilers, they had Vulture in a style of more like the da, uh, a Da Vinci sketch, mm-hmm. hmm. which I thought was phenomenal. Yeah, and I, love how, I love how Gwyn just calls that out and picks up on it right away. Like, okay, you were in some Da Vinci painting and now you're here. <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly. Like, like she just like she just lays it all out. Like like she's just brilliant. The character is just brilliant in, in picking up on those things. So yeah, yeah. So so as you start to watch the uh, the movie, you notice all these different art styles, and a lot of them come from comic books because they were trying to instead. Of, so the first movie is basically a love letter to basically comic book print because when you watch it um you see the registrations that are off you see it just looks like a comic book mm-hmm. you know come to life this one is this is a comic book in different styles coming to life which i thought was really really cool so th- they pulled that off just superb it was just a su- i mean beautiful the way they did that mm-hmm. yeah I, I agree. Well, the integration, it, it, and it's, it's particularly like with with the Spider Spider Punk, where they literally changed his animation from scene to scene, or sometimes within a scene, they would change his style mm. of animation. I thought that was that was really clever uh, to show just the cha- the different uh, changing yeah, styles. Yeah, because there. his style was more of a hard, um, I would say, uh, color uh, color pencil sketch. Mm-hmm. And then when he takes off his mask, then it's a regular pencil, regular graphite pencil sketch. And oh, yeah. I thought that was beautifully done. I was just like, wow. I mean, these guys went just all out. But the great thing about it was that you just saw not only that, but you saw Spider-Man from every kind of medium that was out there. So from the old cartoon, which was very stiff. Mm hmm. To the <laughs> so, to some of the ones that came out, I believe on on Disney XD, which was um, uh, it was like a shorter looking Spider Man, you know, and it was drawn different, like all these different styles of Spider Man that you have ever seen. I think they even did Spider Man from um, what was it, uh, the Middle 66. East or something like that, oh, or yeah, from Japan did. or whatever it came from. Yeah, they did yeah. that one there too. <laughs> yeah, uh, and it's also too uh, to talk about that <laughs> the guy who played Dopinder and. Uh, and uh, Deadpool voiced that Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. If you didn't catch which that. one, the the one where they actually went into the Hindi, the, the, oh, the, the, uh, the uh, India Spider-Man or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Which was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was also beautifully done. That was beautifully oh, done. Yeah, especially with all three of them together within it. Yeah, yeah. I would say this, um, and I experienced this the last time when I went when I saw oh, Spider-Man into the Spider Verse. When I went to the Dolby Theater, Mm -hmm. the colors were bright. The contrast, of course, because the black levels were just deep and rich. And then when I went to see it in a regular theater, it did not look like that. Like the colors were a little more muted. So my recommendation for anybody out there, if you've already seen it, if you get a chance, go see it again. And But this time see it in a, I would say, Dolby Theater. And you will see all of a sudden these colors just come alive. I mean, this yeah. thing was just gorgeous the way it, it was just so powerful, the colors. Yeah. Huh. I think visually, audibly, the, the movie in itself is done very well. They, whoever, uh, I'm, I'm forgetting the director and creators of this, but, you know. There were three me. directors. Mm-hmm. But they were the same ones that did the first one, which was Into the Spider-Verse. So they literally stuck with their guns with this. Like, not not to point out James Gunn for, like, Marvel when they did uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. But 
you stick with the same people that are that creative crew, mm-hmm. you're right. going to hit lightning in a bottle twice. Almost like with uh, with the Avengers, with the Infinity War and Endgame. And with, uh, what was it, Captain America Winter Soldier. But those That particular team, those brothers, the mm-hmm. Russo brothers, were perfect. Right. And they give you exactly what uh, Marvel kind of picked that up right away. DC realized that about James Gunn after he <laughs> doing what, what he did with uh, Guardians and well, that whole debacle of him having to leave. By the way, just so you know, um, the so even though there were three directors in both movies, they were all completely different. Oh, really? Nice. Yeah. So in the first movie, uh, Into the Spider-Verse, it was Bob Persecchi, Chetty, something like that, Peter Ramsey. And Rodney Rothman, but on the on this one it was uh, Joaquin dos Santos, Camp Powers, and Justin K. Thompson. Interesting. Yeah, so it was different. I think the writing was the same, which was Phil Lord and um. Yes, that's what I was. Right. Thinking. I think that's yeah. the key. There's the writers, the the writers being the same, and, and right. Yeah, well, that also is a tribute to the movie as well. It's like the story itself. Now, mind you. <laughs> When you start watching it, you're like, oh, okay, we're taking off where Miles left off. We're going to get into where he's going with school, his family, everything else. And then we got Gwen's story. Well, no, actually, Gwen's story was first. Was that was part, very that, first. Yeah, that yeah, was part right, of the yeah. confusing part for me was, like I said, when like Rob was saying that, that different style of animation, we start with a whole totally different storyline. I'm like, wait a minute, where's Miles? Why are we not – like, why, are we, why do we have this morose – depressing you know Gwen Stacy uh <laughs> right and uh uh but and the, a different story at that too that we was, did not yeah, know it was about her story when. from her from her universe it wasn't it wasn't our universe's story so i thought that was interesting so it was basically her narration in the very beginning mm-hmm. yeah and, and also her story was very quite interesting uh, when it comes to uh her peter parker who was her lizard mm mm-hmm. mhm Yes. Back then, instead of Connors being the lizard, it was it was Peter because he just he wanted to be special. This is something that confused me a little bit throughout the movie, and maybe I I wanted to wait to get into it, but I I I, I feel Good. like I want to get into it now. Is okay. The whole crux of the plot is the fact that the spider from Earth forty two was transported to Miles's universe, which is sixty six ten. Is that right? Or the something, numbers, something like never, that, correct? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, all right. And so he's bitten by the forty-two spider. Okay, but they never explain who was supposed to be the spider because because the, the the whole point that the, the Spider-Man who lost his uh, the Oscar Isaac's Spider-Man, I don't remember his name mm-hmm. now. It's escaping me. But the, the whole point of his thing is that you were the wrong Spider-Man. You weren't supposed to be Spider-Man in this universe. Somebody else, and because you weren't, because you became Spider Man in this universe, there's a, a universe out there that has no Spider Man in it. But what they right. never explain is who was supposed to be the Spider Man in Miles's. Where did that? Where did that Spider go? The sixty six ten Spider. I think that's going to be probably cleared in the third movie, but it may. So towards the very end of the movie, and again, spoilers for everybody out there. Mm-hmm. When Miles goes back to his home, he doesn't go back to earth 1610 which i think is where okay i believe that's where miles comes from earth 1610 1610 okay the whatever program or whatever portal that the other spider-man um who's played by uh what's his name uh, isaac um oscar isaac, oscar oscar isaac. isaac. Yeah. yeah right which is a tw- uh spider-man 2049 that computer i guess read his dna or well, they read had whatever a, they had but some it's sort re- of creature they had some sort of creature that they had that they had found that could read your dna and then send you back to your original correct so that's what they read do right it read the earth 42 dna as opposed to the 1610 so it sent them to earth 42 right where that's where he met the miles morales from that universe which right. now became the prowler right and that's the universe that has no Spider-Man because correct because the, the that spider spi- got transported. Right. Because I guess that Spider-Man, or at least that Miles Morales, was supposed to become Spider-Man, but well, because he never got bitten, yeah. Well, he we don't know. We don't know who we don't know who was supposed to become the Spider-Man in forty-two. We just know 
that the right, spider. But it just, they made so, it seem like that's how that maybe. that's what happened. Yeah, that, that that's a, is it, but that's what I'm saying is 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 what I want them to clear up, or or maybe they just will let it go. Is who was supposed to be the Spider Man in sixteen ten, and where did that's because that spider should still exist. I would assume. That that yeah. spider is still out so. there somewhere. Unless you're talking got- about where, you're talking about the who was supposed to be the Spider Man in Miles Morales's world, right? In yeah, Miles, in Miles world. Well, that was that was the one that got killed in the first movie. Okay, that's see, I didn't watch the first movie. That's why I so okay. So that spider got killed. Oh, you haven't watched the first movie. I didn't rewatch it. I didn't rewatch it. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, okay. I didn't rewatch it. Watch it. No, I've yeah, seen yeah, so, it. I've seen. So it. I just didn't in, rewatch it. Yeah, in his universe, Spider Man got killed by Kingpin. Okay, I'm just right, I, totally, so, I totally blank that out. Okay, yeah. so now so now that's so, so there's no reason to there's no reason to to correct that. He was a new he was a new Spider Man, right? Then yeah. okay, gotcha. Okay, <laughs> that was just it, it, that was just it really, can be confusing for yeah, people. And out I should there. have gone back. I should have gone back and rewatched the first one. If I did, I wouldn't have had that question. I would have understood what happened to the sixteen ten Spider Man. Then okay, okay. <laughs> I also got a little confused too with all the Spider people in there too because. We got Spider Woman, and it's just Drew, and it was played by Issa Rae, and uh, she's on a motorcycle and pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, and she's from Earth four hundred four. I got a list now of like people of who who are presented as who. Okay, and I, I, not to clear it up, like uh, get an idea. And yeah, you were right, Rob, about how like the spider got killed, and that was from forty two, and right, and and what uh, designation you were right on uh, sixteen ten as uh, yeah, because I guess you know Kingpin doing the collider somehow that spider got bought into Miles' uh, universe, yeah, and that's right. how he got bit. And right. that's and what we don't know, like in, I'm assuming because again, I didn't rewatch the the first the first one. Spot is not anywhere in the first one, right? We only find out that he was present in this movie here. The correct. guy, yeah, correct. Okay. Because yeah. so, if you recall, uh, Miles and Peter B. Parker, <laughs> right? Um, <laughs> they went to I guess uh, Kingpin's where the collider was at to try to right. get Compound. that computer. Right as right. they were leaving, Miles computer- takes a donut or a bagel and he. Yeah. Flings it at somebody and it hits him over the head. Okay, that person he flinged that uh, that bagel that donut to is okay. the one who became the spot. Okay, yep. okay, okay. And so, he actually referenced it in this movie too, right? Yeah, because they do a flashback of that whole thing of what happened in the into into the Spider yeah. Verse. Okay, I thought it was funny too, but the he's the worst criminal <laughs> in the very beginning. That that spot character, which but is so I will funny. say, I mean, it, it was such a great character. I mean, he was voice great. I mean, everything about him was just so great. And mm-hmm. at first, you think he's just this, like that tertiary character that you're like, ah, oh, whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> but it turns out that he's gonna, you know, play a bigger role, of course, throughout this whole thing. But it was just such a great character to have in there. It was just like, oh, that's not, you know, they didn't bother with putting like, you know, the Goblin or. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the big um, one of the big villains there. They just put this character that, you know, was, I don't know, lost in time, I guess, in in the comic books. And it was like, sure, let's put him in there. And it's a character from the comics that you would be like, this is a joke. <laughs> yeah, and then exactly. they made it. And he's like, oh, I'm your nemesis. And it's <laughs> like, I'm your worst nemesis. Or yeah. something. <laughs> <laughs> it's it just it's so hilarious. Yeah. Uh, it, it, the fact that it's like they kind of built it up, and I, I really did enjoy that. And yeah. Plus the the design of him over across the whole movie too, because he does change a little bit in his mm-hmm. and how they drew him and and how they made him look. Yeah. I was trying to figure out who uh, who was playing him, but the spot yeah. was played by. Uh, wait, I just. I had it here in just a moment. Uh, Jason uh, Schwartzman. Oh, oh, okay. okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a, a com- uh, it's a comedic actor, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And of course, you know, you got the heavy hitters like uh, Oscar Isaac as Miguel O'Hara who plays Spider Man twenty ninety nine, and you, you got Peter B. Parker. <laughs> Jake, uh, Johnson. Johnson. Jake Johnson, my favorite of all. I love Jake Johnson. He's great. 
the <laughs> character itself, and then Gwen Stacy or Spider Gwen or Spider Woman, Haley Steinfeld. Yeah. So yeah, you and then uh, of course the introduction of Peter B. Parker's kid. Yep. That was great. And he gives her he gives her like a web shooter too. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. He's just I a love baby. seeing that family that family side of him, and I wonder if we're gonna yeah. have that baby in the the third movie as well. If she's gonna come along with him, I I don't know, but that would be interesting. That was great comic relief for those moments where where the the it did get heavy in some spots, and, and then you had oh, this, did. these moments yeah. with the, with the baby where she'd be crawling off or something, and and uh, uh, so I thought that was I thought it was a great way. And Jake, you know. I didn't, I'll be honest. I did not recognize Oscar Isaac's voice. I didn't recognize Haley Steinfeld's voice, but Jake Johnson's voice is so distinctive. Like he didn't, he yes. didn't change it or do anything to make his voice different right. for this character, which I think is great because it, it's, that's one of the polls for some people to the movie. So he's a great voice actor. I mean, he's just like, you know, he, he bought so much, um, presence and so much uh, volume to that character. Mm -hmm. Uh, just by his voice. I mean, so I, he's like probably one of my favorite characters throughout this entire, uh, Oh movie. yeah. Yeah, for sure. I, he's, he's top notch for me. Uh, I, I cannot wait to see the third one. We got, we get the, the, we get the Nicolas Cage, Spider-Man back. We noir. Get, uh, yeah. Noir, <laughs> Spider-Man. Spider-Man noir. Um, yeah. Penny Parker, Spider-Ham. Yeah. I guess they're supposed to come back or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Well, that last shot, you could see that last shot of the movie where there were kind of, you know, assembling the, their spider team. You definitely see Noir and Ham there. I don't remember who else we could see. Uh, in the so shadows. you have, uh, Parker B. Parker was, it? uh, you know, uh, Peter B. Parker's there. Mayday, which is his daughter. That's yeah, what okay. she's called. And there's a Pavit. Uh, I don't know who Pavit is. I'm not sure. Oh, is Pavel? that the anime? The anime I mean, it one could the, be, the girl and in it's the a suit. hobble, a Margo, a Spider Man Noir, Penny Parker, and Spider Ham. So okay. at least they have a group going after uh <laughs> And it's gonna be interesting because yeah. you know, they've got you've got Miles who's stuck in Earth forty two and being like I couldn't wait. I that was another thing that I called out really early on was I was like I was like, Oh, it's not gonna be his uncle, it's gonna be him. It's gonna be his him in this in this universe. Like as soon as the mom was like, Who's Spider Man? I was like, oh, this is the one that has no, this is the earth that has no Spider-Man, you know? And I was like, oh, what became of Miles in this, in this one? And then, you know, they kept, they kept saying, you know, what happened to your dreads? Where's, what did you do to your hair? And so I, I'm really looking forward to seeing that fight, right. how that's going to play out and then how they're going to oh, get, yeah. how they're going to get him transported back to 1610 so that he can save his uh, parents from spot. So. Yeah, they definitely left us off on a on a cliffhanger, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that's the only complaint I think they uh, that this movie has had is the cliffhanger. Even though at first this movie was called Spider Man into the into the Spider Verse, or was it called Across the Spider Verse Across Part yeah. One? Oh, wasn't it? They it took, yeah, they called it Part One at first, and then they took off the Part One because they're doing uh, Beyond the Spider Verse, right? So. It, I think a lot of people forgot about the part one and they were just like left with like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it doesn't, it didn't surprise me. Like I said, I, I saw it coming there towards the end. Cause I was just like, this movie's not going to be three hours. This isn't end game. You know, this is Spider-Man across the spider verse. So I was, I was pretty sure we were going to get a third. And I was really glad that they've already confirmed the date because it's already done. You know, they could release it today if they wanted to, but they're waiting until what March of 2024, I think. Is well, the... no, they're still they're still actually. Uh, as a matter of fact, from what I was reading, it might still get a little bit of a delay because of the writer strike. Oh, okay, so they are still working. So there still might be okay. some more work to be done in there. Okay. But I mean, they're they're trying to go for 2024. The thing is that even if they don't, I'm fine with it because this movie was supposed to be released, I think, a year or two ago, mm -hmm. and they delayed uh, yeah. it because they wanted to get it right. And I don't yeah. have a problem with that. No, I want to delay something to get it right. Sure. Yeah, yeah I'm that, totally this cool was that. one of the movies that they needed to do that with so to get it right. The only other one that we've been dealing with and trying to figure out is The Flash. We won't know that until next week when we cover that. <laughs> <laughs> well, next week, uh, yeah, I got tickets for that. Hopefully, uh, I mean, from what I've been reading and from what I've been seeing in the trades, everybody's just been praising it on how great it is. Yeah, yeah. I've got to go see it, but I tell you what, I just can't. It, Normally, I can separate the actor from the the BS outside the yeah. world crap, but 
But no, it, it's just to see Michael Keaton back on the big screen as Batman. That's the biggest is, allure from uh, for me to go see yeah. it. It's like we got Keaton as Batman, and there's supposedly other hidden gems in there that we don't know about. Yeah, and we don't know unless you know we were at the premiere yesterday that they had in California that I saw on YouTube earlier today. Which uh, <laughs> of all things, Adam the Woo and uh, Scott on tape <laughs> infiltrated the premiere. Oh, yeah? And got to see people coming in and out. So they got to meet Kevin Smith twice as he was walking in and out. <laughs> Kevin J. Muse. And then they, you were seeing all the other actors. And apparently they said, this is a mess. So apparently to get into the theater and out of the theater. Right. Right by Grommens. <laughs> right down on Hollywood Boulevard was a mess. Wow. But, uh, yeah, they, they were standing right there and they were like, people were just coming, walking right past some people trying to get selfies with all the actors and <laughs> stuff, the celebrities that were there. But apparently, uh, yeah, like a lot of like buzzes on that is that it's, that's, it's really good. But there are some people saying one of the best superhero movies out there. Huh? Which, so, all right, I don't all know. right, guys, well, back to Across the Spider Verse. <laughs> Yeah, let's get back we'll to that. Talk to the let's, let's I, I want to talk, talk for a minute about, uh, I think one of my favorite moments in, or, or parts of this was the plan that was not the plan. Like they kept, it kept looked like, it kept looking like Miles had no plan at all until he gets to the end and he's pulling that, the stuff out of that rocket, you know, and he's like, he's like, no, there was a plan. I got all of you out of the building. And I thought that was, I thought that was just brilliant when I heard that. I, Cause I, I was like, wow, that's brilliant. And so he's able to go back in his invisibility and only one, there's only one Spider-Man there. And it's the one that's the virtual reality Spider-Man. Hmm. But I thought that was, that was one of those moments that I thought was really, really cool. Was that? Well, the good writing to me was about this whole, they're, they're trying to correct everybody that's in there. Apparently, um, Spider-Man 2099, who is pretty much what I like to call a dick. To people, <laughs> oh, he's like yeah. that in the comic book too. So I know, mm -hmm. and they, he's trying to correct all this these mistakes. They do reference the uh, No Way Home incident, mm -hmm. correct, and and how it's like that that nerd in that Earth, yes, it all Str uh, Doctor Strange, and that little nerd. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I thought that was so great. We got to reference that, which was pretty cool. Did we get? Any visual? I don't remember. If no, we got any. Uh, the no. only thing that we got that might be related to that universe is uh, actually uh, this guy, uh, Glover, playing Donald Glover. Yeah, yeah, Donald Glover playing the Prowler, which right. he played the character in you know in the Spider-Man movies, but he never played him as the Prowler. On this, we see him as the Prowler with like the gauntlets in his hand, which mm -hmm. was actually a really cool thing. They just kind of bought him in there. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like a, it's not even animation. He was in the cell. The live action. That was a cool the live cameo. action. I yeah. thought that was amazing. Yeah. I they did. had a few live action stuff, but those were mostly clips taken from other movies. Yes. But right. with him, it was more implemented Correct. in there perfectly. And, and it's a, and it, it's a tribute to him because he was uh, actually propositioning to be Miles a long, long time ago when he was on community. Yeah. Right. So I thought that was like great that, and even still, he still played Miles's uncle, and I believe it was the first Spider-Man that we got. Correct. With Tom Holland. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I was saying. So yeah. they took that character from that universe, which of course is the uh, the Tom Holland universe, mm -hmm. uh, which is basically the MCU, and I guess they threw him in here as the actual Prowler this time. Yeah, which yeah. it could be from that universe, or it could just be a different universe, but completely. Yeah. Yeah. I liked we got uh, Ben Riley, which is the Scarlet Spider, which I <laughs> it, and if a lot of listeners, if you don't know it, there was a, a Dan Slott series uh, of Spider-Man. I don't know if it was amazing or spectacular during the time, but it was called it was pretty much the clone verse at that point. And Peter Parker was cloned. Huh. He apparently was died and he died and they cloned him. But this. Peter Parker wasn't brought up as Peter Parker. He was brought up as Ben Riley. Huh. Okay. Right. He calls himself Ben Riley, and he's the Scarlet uh, Spider. And it it's voiced by Andy Samberg from <laughs> Saturday Night Live fan, <laughs> yeah. uh, fame. And uh, I forget was it Brooklyn Brooklyn Nine Nine, yeah, Nine Nine that you like, Steve. Yeah. So yeah, he was in there too. I love to get all that 
the weird stuff that we got out of it that I enjoyed. The different versions you got a cowboy Spider Man with a horse that has the mask on it, <laughs> right? And they and it could spin webs. You got Spider Cat, yeah, a cat spider. <laughs> yeah, they 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 gra- from what I heard, they grabbed a. I mean, they went into like almost every comic book out there that had a different type of Spider Man or something, a depiction of Spider Man. But then they Correct. made up a few just for the movie too. Yeah, that yeah, was they great. definitely did, especially the therapist one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and the T Rex. Yeah. Oh, the T Rex. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they, they, of course, we got that traditional uh, pointing segment. Mm-hmm. Everybody pointing at each other, and you get the weird guy with the multiple arms. And it was at that time when they, I guess, Miles is on the loose in the Spider World, or their, uh, I forget what they called that compound yeah. that they had all the Spider Man in. And- yeah, I thought that was great. The use of the whole canon event that uh, uh, they used on there that, that for the the whole what what did Doctor Who call it? The uh, gosh, fixed point in time can't be changed, but they call it a canon event in this. What I yeah. thought was really cool, the canon event. There always right. had to be a canon event, but you know, and this is where I think the third movie is gonna is gonna clarify this because I think the since Miles is not supposed to be a Spider Man, I don't think the canon events necessarily apply to him. So I think it's going to be where they're going to where they're going to get a loophole in the next in the next movie. But that's my prediction. Yeah, we just have to see how creative they're going to get with mm-hmm. that movie. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, we get more Lego Spider Man. <laughs> that, that was, was cool phenomenal. to see. Also. Yeah, <laughs> that was great. When and I saw one it, of the I started directors, laughing. One of the three directors is he a le- the Lego guy who directed Lego? Yeah, it was actually yeah. uh, what's his name, uh, uh, Lord and Miller. They they both did uh, the what is it? Uh, the Spider Man uh, Lego. Lego. I think. Okay, cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, I I just like uh, I just was so happy to see that. I was like, oh wow, we actually get the like I guess the video game, and then on top of that, they have stuff on. Disney. They did have the video game Spider Man in there also. Yeah, because he has a but, different suit. Yeah, you know from the from the game. I will say this. Um, so like this movie, one of the things I loved about this movie is just the heart of the family on, you know, like the fam- family dynamic of Miles, mm-hmm. how he misses his friends, just like anybody else. You know, when you like, let's say uh, in the summer, you go out to, you know, summer camp and you make a whole bunch of friends and then you come back and you don't have those friends anymore. And that's what it felt like for him is like I made all these really cool friends and I just missed them. Because mm-hmm. he's really a kid with no friends, uh, basically. Yeah. Because, of course, now he's doing the Spider-Man thing. The other thing that I really took from this, and me, of course, having me being a Latino person myself, there were so many Latino references in there that are truly real New York Latin things where the food. I... Well, from the food <laughs> to the way they spoke to each other and certain little things they said in Spanish that nobody will uh, nobody will get unless you are Spanish, mm-hmm. yeah. especially, you know, either Puerto Rican or Dominican from the Bronx. You just don't get that. And they were so the, all those little things I appreciate. I appreciate it so much because there was an authenticity to it that made it a lot more, I don't know, relatable. And but it was just the relationship between, you know the mom and the dad and how, and I love the way miles, the only way he could really talk to his dad was by being a Spider- Spider-Man, a Spider-Man. Yeah. yeah I thought that right. Was- Cause he couldn't talk to him as just miles, but he could talk to him as Spider-Man. And so that relationship I thought was funny too. And, and very interesting. And that, how, his- yeah, that was only, that was the only jarring thing kind of for me. We go from one scene of his dad Who's a lieutenant, but he had stripes on his on his uniform, which didn't make any sense to me. But all down on himself and depressed about how nobody, everybody, he's doing everything wrong and he's he's not doing his job great. And then the very next day, he gets promoted to captain. Like I'm like, wait, <laughs> there's a it was, it was a little jarring, you know? Right. Yeah. But it just seems like anybody who gets promoted to captain is going to get killed. Yeah. That's, <laughs> so that was the one the, thing. The cannon event. Yeah. That was the canon event. That's mm-hmm. the whole point. It's like uh, they, they kind of pointed out because everybody has somebody who died. And it was kind of pointed out in the very beginning. That's how Spider-Gwen got. She had to lose Peter Parker in her world. Uh, Uncle Ben had to die for a lot of other people. It was somebody something. And that's uh, just kind of like Andrew Garfield's mm-hmm. and, and his uh, Spider-Man universe. He had to lose Gwen. Right. 
Because they didn't even mention Ben back then. Again, that's that's nothing that didn't that kind of didn't make any sense to me because the whole Spider Man lore is there's multiple events in his that shape who he is. It's not just Correct. one. And that's what that's what kind of bothered me about this is is even when they're showing the all the different lines corresponding you're seeing that okay almost everybody has an uncle ben has an uncle who dies almost right. all of them have a captain who dies like it's it's like yeah. there's certain canon events it's not just one event that's gonna that's gonna change it so it's what, multiple it's multiple what made peter parker be spider-man was uncle ben because before that remember that in the origin he mm-hmm. became Spider-Man because he just wanted to make money and he didn't stop the person who killed Uncle Ben. From that point on, that he knew that, hey, right. I am responsible for this. But it, yes, he had multiple events that eventually shaped him to be more of mm-hmm. who Spider-Man is. But that was the one point where he transitioned from being selfish to now being selfless. Right, right. My and, and, My confusion was... Miles, I thought Miles' canon event was when his uncle Aaron died in the alley. So yep. why is it that he has to have another event? That's what I'm saying. Is I think there's, I think there's multiple. Like I think multiple. I, ones, I think it was yeah. also right. and like Diego. Is it Diego? What's the what's Oscar Isaac's character's name? Not Diego. Is it Miguel? Miguel. Miguel. Miguel he's picking and choosing the moments where he believes is the canon event. Like he said, like this one event. In uh, uh, that it had to be the death of the captain saving the child in the Indian universe, right? Where they were in Mumbata. Right. And and he said that whole universe is now going to collapse because you, you stopped this one event from happening. Well, they never cut back to that universe to show us, or did they cut back to – I think they did – no, they showed his his universe when his universe got imploded on. Right, because he. Yeah, I'm not sure how that works. It's it's it, yeah, so it's a little confusing there that they're not they weren't super clear about, but we'll see if they clear it up or if they just stick with yeah. the Miles story. I'm sure and, that uh, these guys being creative as they are, because honestly, I sat in the theater and I said, "Listen, the first movie across across the Spider Verse to me is nearly perfect." And How are they going to top into, that? Into, yeah. Into the, yeah. yeah, okay. <laughs> How are they going to top that? I'll never know. Or into the, right, into the spider web. But I'll never know. And yeah. I sat there and I was like, holy crap, they did it. I can't believe that they actually topped what they did before. So these guys are very creative and passionate about this kind of project and the yeah. character that I believe that they'll do it justice on the third one. Hopefully I, they will. I, I mean, it right. sucked to have two amazing good movies and then the last one really sucked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We don't want to return to the Jedi. <laughs> that was good. I'm just kidding. All right. We'll discuss that at a later point. It was an empire, but it was good. <laughs> it was all Muppets. Uh, but uh, to top on what you were saying, Rob, too, about uh, about Latino and how he was, I there was one thing, especially it's like when he he's delayed in the very beginning to get to his meeting with the principal with his parents. Yeah. And he's dealing with Spot during that time, and he's texting him, and the a whole... It's the typical Spider-Man thing. But when he finally sits down with them, he goes like, oh, you got an A in this, you got an A in that. It's like, okay, okay. You got to be in Spanish. <laughs> be in Spanish! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly the same look my mom would have given me. So. <laughs> exactly. How dare you? <laughs> you are Latino. You're supposed to know that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, but, people don't realize that this is the funny part about this because when I when I see that, I'm like, yes, I can relate to that. But people <laughs> really don't realize that. Yes, even Spanish people could fail Spanish because you might speak the language, you might not speak the proper Spanish, like from Spain or something like that. Yeah, with all the proper grammar and all this stuff, you might speak more of a uh, a certain slang. kind of ethnic group kind like of a Spanish. slang, yeah. like a slang. You know, so you might actually fail the class because you're like, that's not my Spanish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, or if you, uh, I had a, a couple of friends and my friend, Joey, I would go to his house. His mother would be speaking Spanglish to me. Yes. It would be a mix of English and Spanish. And, you know, he's Puerto Rican and, his mother does speak English, but she really is frustrating. So she'll she'll talk to him in in Spanish, 
she'll yell at me in Spanglish, and I'll be like, "Yeah, I already, I know what you're saying, Mom. Thanks." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like no, I, 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 I've I actually seen. Late. Yeah, I've actually seen not only Spanglish but Spanglish with Gaelic also mixed into it. Really? Yes, because uh, uh, my ex girlfriend from a long time ago, she was from Spain, but she was from the Gaelic area or something like that of Spain or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And so she's like, yeah, th- they have like a, their own language. So I remember being at, ma- at her mom's house and it was like Spanish, some English, and then the Gaelic part of it. And it was just like such a mishmash of things. And I've been to other people's homes where they- it's Creole. Mm-hmm. So you got Spanish, yeah. English, and Creole being mixed in also. And you're like, <laughs> holy crap. <laughs> i'm trying to keep up with the conversation could you still <laughs> keep it at one <laughs> yeah but i i just love though the dynamic and that and i just also love the uh idea of miles uh we, we were talking about loss and everything else that every there it's canon mm-hmm. now the conversation that he has with gwen and he he's trying to get close to her and then how she lost and then how and she basically spells out that the the canon in it, mm-hmm. and it, it, like anybody who gets close to somebody would die. And I think she mentioned somebody about being in love with a Gwen or something. Well, she says it in it. most she says in most universes where Peter Parker, where Spider Man and Gwen Stacy get together, it ends up in tragedy. I don't know. Yes, is right. how she says it. She says almost all of them end up in tragedy when Spider-Man gets together with Gwen Stacy. But the, the, the way they were actually able to introduce that, and it's like, mm-hmm. you could see how in love Miles is with her. And then he has to pull away. Yeah. Then you see it by the hand. Yeah. And how such, such slight suggestion within that scene itself. And it's not even people that's doing it. It's a, it's a cartoon mm-hmm. <laughs> of all things, all animation. And I love that. And I, I love the uh, whole, uh, him fantasizing about explaining to his parents who he is, that he is Spider-Man. And then you're like, oh, maybe this will happen. Oh, no, it doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> He's all happy about it, and you see they're all embracing, and then next thing you know, it goes back, and then, of course, the typical, uh, you know, Miles' mom going, I-, I think she actually mentioned, it's like, does she even speak Spanish? I doubt she speaks Spanish. <laughs> so, oh. Goes, oh, yeah, Gwen Stacy. Yeah, she says Gwen. Oh. Yeah. She's <laughs> she referring she to Gwen, the distance. Gwen the, seeing that there's a romantic, that there could be a romantic thing developing Well, that's there. a typical Latina mom, mm-hmm. which is like, yeah. well, because, look, I, even though me having a background as as a Latino, I used to date outside my culture. So, <laughs> and my mom was always like, but well, wait. What do you mean she's not, you know, Spanish? You know, yeah. so it, that's that's <laughs> definitely a very, I think, ethnic thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where it's like, why are you not, you know, dating the person that you know you're supposed to be dating and stuff? <laughs> and I thought I, I thought that was hilarious. Yeah, yeah, it, it's like that whole setup too, especially with the um, uh, the party. It's a party on a rooftop too, of all things. Oh my god, you see that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know that. Yeah, it's usually in Brooklyn and and Queens, and yeah, yeah, they'll have that all the time. It's a city thing. <laughs> oh, I actually did that in Park Hill too on Staten Island once. I was invited once. That was a bad idea. <laughs> Listen, it was a cartoon, and I was watching. I was getting hungry. I was like, oh, I could use some Spanish food right now. <laughs> <laughs> I could smell it through the screen. I could smell it through the screen. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it smells but- animated. <laughs> <laughs> But overall, yeah, the movie was done very well. We we got a lot out of this particular movie, and it rings over two hours, mm-hmm. I believe. 140 minutes considered the longest American animated movie ever. Yeah, and I didn't stay didn't through the credits because I knew, I knew there was no after credit scenes. So I didn't even I didn't even wait. Once it said to be continued, I just was like, oh, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> but to me, uh, I, it's... It didn't feel like a, a two hour plus movie. No, oh, no. It, no. It, when you're it, enjoying it, something like that, I mean, I remember when I was watching um, Infinity War and uh, Endgame, which were so damn long. And <laughs> you know what? You just don't feel it. Hell, well, even, even if you watch it back to back, even like if you have Disney Plus or whatever, if you right. do those movies back to back and you make it like, it's like I did it one Saturday morning. I woke up extra early. Why am I up so early or something? I was like, uh, I don't have cable or anything like that, so I'm not going to watch the news. Or I was like, All right, what do I want to watch? 
So I wound up doing that and I didn't realize and by the time I started it at like eight o'clock in the morning, by the time I was like, oh, it's afternoon already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Both movies. It's like, oh, OK. It's kind of like those people binge watch or binge through the Lord of the Rings series. Mm hmm. No, I, so I need a bathroom break when, when it comes to those. <laughs> well, I would, I would still go to the bathroom, obviously, but I just didn't realize the time, you know. Although I will say, uh, what is it, Zack Snyder's Justice League, when I first started watching, which is four hours long. Yeah. I was so sucked into it that the four hours just passed by like nothing. Oh, yeah, it it will. For the fact yeah. that it's, uh, it's a bit different, it, you know, uh, just to touch on it a little bit, if you think about that movie, there's still stuff in there from the previous movie version of it justice <laughs> league they keep saying it's new stuff new stuff it's all him well it's kind of like with uh the donner cut of superman 2 because <laughs> yeah. they still had to use the other guy's stuff at, at certain points but they use different shots that they didn't use mm -hmm. to, to fill in the gaps right so and donner actually states that too so if you get the box set or whatever it is of Superman and Blu-ray or whatever, they have the Donner cut. That'll be interesting. I'm I'm still curious about this this cut that uh that Kevin Smith has uh, on Batman Forever. Really? Yes, it's an extended cut. Uh who did Batman Forever? I'm forgetting what's that his was name? Joel Schumacher. Schumacher. Yeah. Yeah, it's the Schumacher cut. So he's saying there's like an extra 15, 20 minutes in this movie. That movie's horrible to begin with. The extra 15 minutes ain't gonna make it any better. <laughs> I know. Well, we'll see. But uh, I, uh, he's apparently going to be having it at Smart Castle Cinemas. Uh, oh well, look at that. We don't get paid for that, people. So, but <laughs> it's a cheap pop and plug for Kevin. So, <laughs> but yeah, the uh, apparently he has it, and it's all on the internet. For like every time I look at my internet, not because you know I look at what Kevin does, but it just showed up. And I'm right. like, are you kidding me? <laughs> this is news. <laughs> <laughs> but apparently it's stuff that I like. But, yeah. Well, we all that, do. That's all I had. I didn't have any quotes. No, but, I'm, I'm uh, tapped out. So Yeah, no. I would say, again, I would say, I mean, this movie, a big surprise. First of all, I think it's the best movie of 2023. Yeah. Hands down. It, and yeah, I it's one of the ones I would yeah, do. Um, I think I haven't gone just, to Transformers yet, guys, so I don't want to. I went to <laughs> I went to Transformers, and I would say it's a good movie. Is it as good as uh, Bumblebee? No, but it's better than the Michael Bay films. <laughs> okay, definitely. Uh, you get a lot of people who have actually said that you know the the the, the what is it the. Um, the transforming uh, animals. I've uh, what they call them? The beast of maximals. The maximals. Yeah, because that, that what it is. Yeah, I think so. Because a lot, it, for a lot of people who are fans of it, they grew up with the maximals. I I grew up with the original Transformers. Yeah, not the maximals. So the maximals. Uh, a lot of people said, you know, that they liked the way they depicted them, and you know, they, you know, they, they were done very well. I thought. I was Optimus just making a was, joke. I wasn't meaning to. <laughs> no, no. We, we go no, off no, the I'm just letting you know. It's, trying, uh, you yeah. know it's, okay. I think it's a good movie to check out. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. And it has a really good surprise ending. So Good. All right, cool. All right. Well, I, I think we covered Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, which is uh, I mean, we cool. didn't get into deep down details of it. But nah. that being said, no, it's. No, just again, give her our overall opinion and thought. We do endorse that movie. Definitely suggest you guys go see it if you haven't already, and you see like it the multiple spoiler. times. That's what yeah. I would say. Yeah, you'll you'll get a little bit more out of it. And if you're a true Spider-Man fan and you like like all the different versions, like I do, you know, I always wanted to see Spider-Punk. I got a one of those vinyl statues of Spider-Punk. Oh, you do? That's pretty I cool. I have one. It's pretty cool. I have one of those along my standard one that you see of him standing on top of like a a church pillar, right? Uh, with the hand hanging down, I have like two of them. One of them I'm just gonna paint black, put it as the black suit Spider Man eventually. But I always wanted to see that particular Spider Man. But also, I I loved it. The little kid in me giggled with the Lego one. Uh, yeah, that was. Fun. Yeah. I would say Sp like Spider Punk was one of those characters that I just never knew anything about. First time I think I got any exposure to him was through the Spider Man um video game. Okay. And I was like, oh, okay. He looks like a stupid character. <laughs> I will say that when I saw him in this movie, I was like, oh, I fell in love with this character, man. Oh, yeah. It's oh, they made him great. Jamaican. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I love that too. Yeah. It's like they don't, uh, the fact that it, all the different ethnicities of these particular Spider Man, that's what I really enjoy too, for the fact that it gives a little bit more flavor and it appeals to yeah. everybody. By the way, you, know? you didn't give a quote. You say, you know, you didn't have any quotes on this, but one mm-hmm. good memorable quote was Miles when he saw Spider Punk without the mm-hmm. mask and he goes, Wow, you look even cooler without the mask. <laughs> it was just one of those cool things. It was like, okay, that's that's kind of cool. I like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's pretty cool. But for news, well, obviously, Flash is coming up. We already spoke a little bit about that as we were talking about Spider Man across the universe, right? But we will be covering it when it comes out. Hopefully, try to keep these podcasts going like uh, we used to <laughs> get them at least once a week before Secret Invasion and. On top of that news with Secret Invasion, you get the first three minutes if you actually go to a website and put in a passcode. So you get to see the first three minutes of Secret Invasion. Right. And, and uh, they then it goes right into a trailer. And we're looking to do that. It's episodic. We're going to be doing that every episode when it comes out. I Knowing Marvel and Disney, they'll probably drop two at the same time, which sucks. But we're only going to do one per week. So it leaves, gives you guys enough time to uh, send feedback if you want and allows us get enough time to, uh, you know, basically absorb all the content that we're getting. Because I think this is going to be a doozy when it comes to looking at the movie and figuring out what's going on, because this is another part of that setup for phase five. I th- we're in phase five, I think, right? As far it, as I recall, I don't know. I've yeah. lost track. So <laughs> I've lost track too. It's like every time I they keep saying five and six and four, and I'm like, um, okay. <laughs> uh, but regardless, it, part of this particular phase that we're getting into when we get all the way down to uh, Secret Wars at the very end, we got the only other news that I had was interesting. Other than John, like Jonathan Majors, we got another character out there, an actor. I got into a little bit of trouble, sexual assault allegations from the guy who played Namor. And I'm curious uh, what that's going to happen. Really? But yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that that's out there, but we don't judge. But apparently it's out there in uh, in the world for people to talk about. I've seen it on Everything Always on YouTube and all those different guys that cover all the Marvel stuff. Right. They they just call it uh, news that's out. It's just allegations at this point. Nothing. There's no arrest involved. Nothing going on like that. So there we have it. We'll see what happens with that outcome. Not that they're, I don't think they're looking to recast no more at all. Eventually they would have to have something with him in it. But like I said to you before, Rob, what kind of forever kind of was like a blur to me. Very much like uh, the Eternals, so it feels like the. Uh, I like- mean, it was way better than the Eternals. It's just that, well, of course, you know, the heart of the first movie was uh, Chadwick Boseman, and yes, not to have him in there mm-hmm. made it. And of course, they didn't want to recast him, so it just it didn't have. I think the heart. I mean, they paid good tribute to him. I think. Yeah, it just that soul of the movie was missing. Mm-hmm. Which, but it was still a much better film than the Eternals, I think. Uh, it will. It what it did was give a setup for a new Black Panther, which Shuri. We, right. Well, spoilers, everybody, if you didn't see it, but Shuri uh, be, became Black Panther. Then we got Ironheart in there too. The introduction of her, and then I obviously the, I, that's the one character I hated. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we also we we lost some things too. With Disney Plus, they 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 got. I think they're canning Echo. Yes, that's not coming through. So we're not getting that TV. And Ironheart probably is not going to come out either. So no, they'll put it in Iron Wars because that's literally what Secret Invasion and with the Thunderbolts, they'll probably incorporate her into it at some point. Right, the better makeup and mock up of her suit, and then have something else there. They're constantly changing. Right now, Marvel, Disney's in flux with the stories based upon all the stuff that's been coming out because of, you know, they were banking, like we said before, on Jonathan Majors as Kang. They could, if they redirect the uh, the narrative on who's the big bad, and then during the time of the pandemic, they were able to get back the rights for the Netflix properties and IPs. Right. They're eventually going to be removed, too, from uh, Disney+. Plus. 
because uh, we're going to get Daredevil Reborn and uh, well, Punisher. It might been... stay, but the thing is, uh, the the streaming, I, I would say the streaming business out there is not a very lucrative business, as people yeah. thought. And I think studios are try- are finally finding out that, because you have to remember that as these things are getting streamed, whoever was involved with those shows is still getting royalties. Yes. But if it's something that, you know, a company has in a streaming service that, hey, every time these things are getting streamed and they're up there, we're still giving royalties, but we're not making any new money out of it. Mm-hmm. They're realizing that licensing it to other streaming services is probably going to be more lucrative than just having it on their own streaming service. Yeah, they'll they'll probably relicense it back. Right. To Netflix. Watch. Who knows? I mean, we'll have to see. I just know that Bob Iger just came in, you know, with a hammer and said, listen, enough of all this crap that we've been doing, which I think yeah. is a great thing. The amount of Marvel content and, and Star Wars content released in one year was just way too much. Yeah, they, and, they flooded it. Yeah. And so there, his whole thing is like, we'd rather do quality than quantity, which I'm fine with. If you want to take a year or two to actually release something. But it's going to leave me talking about it and saying, wow, I can't believe how great it was. Mm -hmm. I'm all for that. Yeah, same here. Yeah. So I thought that was actually excellent that they're doing that. But, you know, a lot of shows are getting canceled. A lot of Star Wars shows also got canceled. We'll just have to see where things go. I'm just hoping that, you know, if they are going to do something like that, that the quality of the content is going to be a lot better and leaves us wanting more as opposed to saying you know what i think i had enough right <laughs> which i think that's where we're at kind of right now. yeah yeah i think a lot of people are like that yeah all right well uh as we come towards the end at the end actually of the podcast uh this is where we uh talk about where people listeners can hear you so or what we could plug for other podcasts that we like and enjoy so rob where could be found I could be found at uh, Fantasy Picks Movie Edition, where I normally cover movies that were overhyped, big budget movies that were overhyped, but they failed at the box office or critically. And what we do is we do our own fantasy casting with it. We also do some top fives also there. So we pick a genre, pick an actor, and then, you know, we do our own top five uh, draft coming out of that. And hopefully soon we're probably going to say, I know that we mentioned that we were going to do uh, a Star Wars section. Unfortunately, one of the uh, one of our hosts uh, will not be able to come back. Uh, so we are kind of changing it up and we might actually change it to more of a, doing a deep dive on music composers at least once a month. So I'm hoping that becomes a regular thing. Um, we just actually finished doing the top five composers, which we had a lot of fun on that. Yep. And it was the first time that we actually included music and things like that. So we're hoping that we can actually cover that since it was actually a very passionate podcast we did on when it came to that. So, <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. Uh, you have anything to share, Steve? Any cool things in the podcast world that you are, are liking? Just right here on panels to pixels when I can, when I can get done <laughs> and I send, <laughs> I send in short voicemails to other podcasts that we love. Uh, yeah. The ones that are still running out there are uh, on Podcastica, the From, the WTF is From cast is out there, and I submit something to them as, as much as I can. And uh, Strange Indeed is about to wrap up their, their coverage of Sweet Tooth, but uh, yeah, you yeah. can hear my voice on things. Short. Yeah. <laughs> this is where you hear my long, form, my long form when I can handle it, so. Yeah, it's fine. You're always here. You're always the mainstay, dude. But the... Uh... Yeah, uh, to continue the love for Podcastica, check out Run For Your Lives. They're over there on Podcastica, and they're doing, most recently, they're doing Battle Royale, the Japanese movie. So check that out. Daphne and I had did that on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, which you could also hear me on. And uh, they're covering Battle Royale. They're going to do their version of it, which is pretty cool. Uh, and it's pretty funny, though, because that was the the fourth episode of Adrenaline Cinema Podcast we, I ever did. So, uh, good luck to them. And, and actually, uh, I look forward to sending a little bit of feedback because, uh, you know, I wouldn't have been able to do that on my own podcast, <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, send some love to the podcastica network. All you have to go is to, uh, go to podcastica.com and you can check out all the different podcasts that they have there on their network that we all love. Yellow Jackets WTF, 
I think House Podcast is still a long standing because they have a variety of different shows and everything that goes on there. It's Showtime, folks. Lost We Have to Go Back, Revisited, which Ben still has something in the works for after that's finished. You, you could hear me on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast on uh, Power Car Entertainment Network, just like you could hear Rob on Fantasy Picks Movie Edition with uh, everything else. Uh, Adrenaline Cinema Podcast will be doing Space Camp from 1986. Wow. It'll be a round <laughs> table. So uh, our love for that. So we'll be uh, we'll be covering that. I think myself, Rima, Ben Elmore showed interest, as well as uh, a friend Diana, who is on Aim for the Head podcast. So it's just a matter of trying to get everybody together yeah, to get do it all that. scheduled for the right the, the right day and time for everybody. Can get yeah, to. so uh, make that happen uh, the best we can. I think I invited you too, as well, Steve. Too. Yep. So it's just a matter of trying to get everybody together at the same time so that we're not yeah. conflicting. Yeah, exactly. But other than that, uh, that's our podcast. But uh, we're going to go right into where you can actually submit your feedback. So we can be heard on Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, or whatever podcast player of choice that you have. If ratings are available there, please do so. Uh, the best one to do would be Apple Podcasts that gets us more listeners. People look at reviews and that's how they rate or figure out what they want to listen to because of those ratings. Uh, you just go to our website. Once that's completed, handles the pixels podcast.com. Best way to get in touch with us or to actually send anything is when I actually do post something in a picture, uh, is on Facebook. So you go to facebook.com forward slash panels to pixels. I post the image of what we're going to be covering the following week or that next episode. You can just leave your comment in the comment section below it. We can be found on Twitter at Panels2Pixels. So occasionally I like to throw out a tweet when I can. And the best and easiest way is to send in your feedback. Just email us, Panels2Pixels1 at gmail.com. That's panels Two is spelled T-O, pixels, and the number one at gmail.com. And all you have to do is just write out your text, you know, a texted email. It's all you see your thoughts. Uh, if you don't feel like actually writing anything, you just want to put something out there in an email, you record yourself and just throw it in as an attachment and we'll play it on the podcast. We could also be found on YouTube. So obviously, uh, I've done a couple of interviews with people and they can be found on YouTube four panels to pixels, but uh, you could actually listen to the podcast. Some people prefer that way. I don't know. We got a lot of listeners recently through just the podcast version or um, the podcast playlist that I created. So people are actually listening through YouTube. Uh, all you have to do is look for panels to pixels podcast, subscribe and give it a thumbs up. If you like what we do, we are on Instagram and that would be at panels to pixels podcast. So that's, for you people out there who want to, if you want to send any feedback or interact with us in any way. So that's our show, and we will see you next week. I am Mark. I'm Steve. And I am Rob. <laughs> and this is uh, Panels to Pick the Podcast. We'll see you on the next panel. See ya. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.